How do native speakers truly feel when talking with non-native speakers? Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm Julian Northbrook from doingenglish.com here with another quick two minute English learning tip for you. Are you ready? Hit it. Somebody asked on the question and answer site, Quora, how do native speakers truly feel when talking with non-native speakers? This was an interesting question, but more interesting were the responses. You see, there were hundreds and hundreds of them. Interested in what these people had to say and what their uh, attitude towards this particular question might be, I uh, did my typical thing of going totally over the top with it and becoming a little bit obsessed. I went through every response, downloading them all and loading them into my qualitative data analysis software. I then spent an entire day doing some pretty thorough uh, analysis of uh, these responses and what came out of it was quite interesting. In fact, I do need to write this up because it would make quite a good research paper and I still haven't gotten around to it. I digress. The vast majority of responses were quite positive. People said that they actually really enjoy talking to people from other countries and other cultures because it allows them to talk about and experience via those people and their stories a whole different way of life. They are fascinated about their home countries, their cultures and the different ways ways of looking at things that those people have. However, at the same time, many of those same people also said that it was important to them that you were able to have a decent conversation with them. It's not that they were bothered about your mistakes or grammar or using the wrong words or anything like that, or even really the speed at which you speak, your fluency, or really any of the things that non-native speakers tend to worry about. Rather, what people were mostly concerned with was the depth and the quality of the conversation. They didn't like being stuck in conversations that were too shallow, too surface level. They wanted to really get deep into the topics and to be able to go further than just surface level stuff. But that's not all, because there was another very interesting finding that came out of this analysis. Although I've already said that these native speakers weren't really bothered about your mistakes, you using the wrong word or the wrong grammar or something like that. It was the depth of conversation most important to them. There was a slight caveat here. You see, although they're not bothered about your mistakes, it was very important for them to be able to understand you easily. First and foremost, people said they felt tired when they had to work hard to try to understand what you are saying, and that ruined the enjoyment of the conversation. But also many people said that they felt too embarrassed to ask you to repeat things and they felt stupid themselves when they couldn't understand you. Now many people worry about making mistakes because they think if they use the wrong word, people will look at them as if they are stupid. But actually it was the other way around. The native speakers themselves felt inadequate, like they were unable to understand you and unable to aid you in the conversation. So what really comes out of this is that Native speakers don't care about your mistakes and things as much as you think they do. However, in order for a conversation to be a good one, it is important to them that you are able to do it at a high level, to be able to go deep into a topic and to be able to explain your points clearly and in a way that people can easily understand. Or to put it another way, they don't want to have to work hard to have the conversation with you because that just ruins the enjoyment and makes them them feel inadequate. If you want to polish up your English so you can get to the level where you can easily do that and have those deep, enjoyable, easy to understand conversations with people, head over to doingenglish.com slash free training and check out my free training where I teach you the five key changes you need to make to your English learning routine in order to transform your English speaking in record time. Alternatively, if you're ready to take it to the next level right here, right now, head over to doingenglish.com slash talk to book your free one-on-one -on -one consultation with me to see how and indeed if I can help you to make that English transformation. This is me, Julian Northbrook, signing out from another video. If you found this useful, give it a nice big old thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs up anyway, and I'll see you, my friend, in the next video. Bye-bye.